The UAE, Kuwait and Bahrain are joining Saudi Arabia's decision to withdraw diplomats from Lebanon and expel Lebanese envoys. The UAE has even banned its citizens from visiting Lebanon. So here with us is uh, Dr. Jacques Neria, an expert on Lebanon, and joining us now from Manama, Bahrain, is uh, Abdallah al the a columnist and an analyst. Uh, analyst. We'll start with you, Abdallah. Uh, what happened? All of this because of a few words of the information minister, George uh, uh, Kodahi, that was uh, talking even before he became a, uh, a minister. What happened? Uh, good evening, first of all, and thank you for having me. Uh, I can assure you it's not because of the comments of the uh, information or uh, minister or die. It is something to do with how much that the current Lebanon as a state could be tolerated. It's a total failed state. It represents a direct threat to our national security. And it shouldn't, and we can tolerate accommodating such a state or recognizing it. So was this just uh, basically an excuse to escalate relations with Lebanon, would you say? Uh, put it this way, it's, uh, uh, we are targeting definitely Hezbollah, not just Lebanon. Mm -hmm. So uh, Jacques, let's, let's uh, get back to you. Uh, so there's, there's more behind it. Well, definitely. I agree, first of all, that uh, this is not as the, the foreign minister, the Saudi foreign minister. It's not a crisis with Lebanon. It's a crisis in Lebanon. And the Saudis, as well as the, as, uh, the other Gulf states, are trying to, uh, to maintain Lebanon's Arab identity versus what Hezbollah is trying to transform Lebanon into a province of the theocratic empire of Iran. This is, this, this is the whole game right now. So in this, in this battle, at this point, Saudi Arabia and its allies have scored a point, a very major one, because the, uh, the punitive measures that were, that were uh, addressed to Lebanon will hurt Lebanon very much, and certainly the, uh, the, the, the Shiite clientele of Hezbollah. Because if you're talking about agriculture, for instance, 55% of uh, Lebanon's agricultural products are exported to the Gulf states and Saudi Arabia. And who are the farmers? The farmers are the Shiites. This is going to be felt. And this is certainly a card that the Saudis and others will continue to play. Okay, uh, certainly in the situation where Lebanon is uh, right now, uh, this is a very grave situation economically. But I want to ask you, Abdallah, if, let's say the minister resigns, Kordahi, will that change anything? No. <laughs> Thank you for the elaborate answer. Uh, but what, you know, what will they say uh, if, if you know, the Lebanese Prime Minister will say, okay, the, the information minister is out, uh, can you bring things back? I will go to the uh, statement made a few days ago by the, uh, uh, by the Prime Minister when he was asked who is the decision maker when it's come to national uh, decision level for Lebanon. And he clearly said without any hesitation, it is Hezbollah. So why should we have to tolerate such a country that has failed to produce uh, a responsible and a, an accountable national authority? Right. Well, you, have, you have also to remember that uh, there is a history, a, a bloody history between Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states with Hezbollah. Hezbollah has been fighting the, the rebels in Syria, so-called rebels, who, uh, we, who were the allies of Saudi Arabia. Hezbollah is, being, uh, is instructing and manning missiles and drones and sending them uh, inside Saudi Arabia. I mean, this is, this is the, the, the case. I mean, this is a state of war that exists between Saudi Arabia and Hezbollah. And now is the time to settle the, 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 the feud between the two. Well, uh, obviously, this is uh, devastating financially, economically to, to Lebanon. Uh, exactly when you would expect uh, maybe uh, you know, richer nations to help, Arab richer nations to help Lebanon. So how bad is it for them, Jacques? 
Okay, Let, let's begin with the uh, freezing of Qard al Hassan assets. This is the, this is a, a, a way to to uh, to, to stop transferring uh, remittances from Lebanese city, uh, uh, nationals in Saudi Arabia and the Gulf into Lebanon, and of course helping uh, uh, Hezbollah. Just to give you an idea, from the from Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states, Lebanon receives every year 4.5 billion dollars sent by the Lebanese. It's half of all the, the monies that come from abroad inside Lebanon, and this is what keeps Lebanon alive. Out of the $4.5 billion, half of it comes from, uh, from Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. More than that, you have in Saudi Arabia 350,000 Lebanese nationals living there and working there, and more than 600 business entities that uh, the total value is about 125 trillion uh, that billion dollars so there's a lot to lose if uh, if hezbollah keeps on uh, uh, defying saudi arabia and certainly the punitive measures that uh, uh, saudi arabia and other gulf states have a lot to say uh, the, against uh, um, in such a case let me remind you that during the first gulf war when yasser arafat sided with saddam hussein who paid the bill 300,000 Palestinians were expelled from the Gulf states and Saudi Arabia and find, found refuge either in Israel, and the West Bank, of course, mm -hmm. and other places. So this is a, a, hard, a hard card to play. And right now, I think that the Saudis are pushing forward. And uh, uh, as our, our, uh, our guest here said, an, an apology is not enough. Mm -hmm. uh, one one, one yes. more thing. One yeah. more thing I want to add to what John had just said. For the past 20 years or more, Lebanon by Hezbollah is, was and continued to traffic uh, narcotics uh, and vitamins, um, mainly uh, captagons through every possible ways. And they use their uh, farming uh, uh, farmers' products to, to smuggle tons and tons of, of, of captagons bills. So this is targeted at our youth, and we believe uh, strongly that it can't be tolerated because it's a direct attack on our national security, our youth. I would add that, I mean, they use agricultural products, especially fruits, pomegranates. Instead of the fruit inside, they put captagons. And the Saudis, uh, they're just uh, uh, intercepted. Not just Saudi. Another yeah, Gulf state. All the Gulf all, countries. They, they, and the last one, they, they, they intercepted four, five point two million pills of Captagon sent from Lebanon to, uh, to, to the mm. states here. So, uh, Abdullah, I want to ask you, what should happen in order for relations to be restored, if at all? Uh, I don't think it's going to something that's going to take place very shortly. Um, we're going to just play uh, uh, patient, be patient. The, uh, the status of diplomatic representative going to stay probably low for a long time to come. Uh, we're going to, uh, you know, uh, continue applying this sort of pressure from my point of view that the governments of the four countries that have seized or recalled or minimized the representation going to continue to do so and uh, definitely most of them have put a total zero uh, import or accepting any imports from uh, Lebanon furthermore none of our nationals will be allowed to travel to Lebanon that, that's going to hurt them big time. Uh, thank you very much Abdullah in Manama, Dr. Jacques Neria, thank you uh, very much.